I V M. Hi and welcome to New York Kanoon. This is Amber from Corpus Legal and on today's episode I have a guest again with me Miss Asleen Kaur who has been Miss India Earth International. She is a creative individual as well, model actor and so forth so on the laurels keep going on. So Asleen can you please tell us on today's issue about sexual harassment in your field because you've been experienced enough. You've been here for like almost more than 10 years being part of the industry and you've come a long way. Something that you would want to talk about in terms of you know maybe your juniors who are coming in and also your experiences and in in connection to the last episode which we had on um, sexual harassment what is your take hi amber and thank you for having me on the show um yeah so i've been a part of the entertainment industry i've been modeling for over a decade i've done a movie um i've done multiple events i've won the pageant i represent my country internationally uh but in like all other fields sexual harassment exists but uh, in my field in particular it it is a lot more rampant um I haven't gone through it as badly as some of my colleagues have. Um the casting couch exists. Uh, it's it's not something that's only written about in the papers or in the magazines. It it very much exists. Uh women go through it and it um men at powerful positions tend to exploit uh they exploit their power because they are the ones giving out the jobs giving out the assignments whether it's modeling assignments or movie assignments especially in bollywood and other movie um, uh, and other movie uh, things that happen um so that happens a lot i personally have uh, tried my best to be away from all these kind of elements which is why i kind of uh, i i went back to modeling i did one film i went back to modeling because i felt that this is not really my cup of tea i'm not going to walk into um a 10 o'clock or an 11 o'clock meeting into someone's house and then you know make myself available where the other person thinks that okay fine she's she's there and i can um, you know she they don't take you professionally they don't take you seriously then so i've seen it uh, myself a lot i've heard horror stories from my friends and it's quite it dampens your spirits actually especially in this industry where it's all it's a lot it's more about talent it should be about talent but then eventually it boils down to um where are you giving sexual favors so that's pretty sad it happens all over the world but in india also so yeah So my take on this Hasleen is this that I've been talking about sexual harassment in India um on different levels whether it is education whether it is mindset now as girls you guys come into the industry i'm sure see you are also citizens of this nation and i'm sure you guys are aware of the laws that are there how is it that nobody in the industry invokes this law and uh, hardly cases have come up and only when i'm um, the tanushree datta incident came up or right. subsequently other issues come up so isn't there a huge you inquire because you know i we seriously criticize and say that people in the rural areas do not know the law but that is also equivalent to what we see here i mean you have i'm sure there are organizations and uh, production houses and so forth so on that function they must be having some kind of committees you know complaint committees etc are you guys made aware of these things that you know this is there or is the talk around between the girls that what is is there a system like that aware what should we do to curb it because education is the only way to curb it right to move forward how is it that on these instances it does not happen at all and we hardly see anything in a young model's career when they are growing i don't think an independent complaint committee exists in production houses it's not how corporates function uh, if a girl is sexually harassed she has to represent herself like how tanushri datta had to and her case got so much media attention uh, suddenly and then suddenly again it died down because then media wanted to move on to other better topics that were being spoken about i was part of the debate quite um, uh, i frequented a lot of news channels and i was talking about how it affects a lot of women the thing is women don't come out and talk so much about it because the problem is they think it's part and parcel of it either i will get exploited or i'll ignore it and i'll walk off so the ignorance part is wrong they are not really taking it up that seriously and voicing out their opinions to that extent that um, a committee can be formed or people get together and they're like okay we're going to work towards safeguarding the interests in fact on the contrary how it's worked is yesterday i went uh, for for a test and after the test was done it was a casting test after the test was done now companies have become very um what they're trying to do is they are trying to safeguard their interests at the beginning when you, before you start the test they will take an undertaking from you and they say that in that you talk about yourself and then then in the end that there is a point which says that um 
there was no interaction uh, or um, sexually or there was nothing that I was harassed. So that point mentions and you have to sign it before you start the test. So they are already and the thing is when when you're an artist who's out there to seek a job and um, such an and for you it's about making it right so you wouldn't care at that moment to you know it's just a piece of paper i'm going to sign it but these corporates are safeguarding themselves whereas on the other side there is no committee there is no union of models that is there there is an actors union that exists but they don't address sexual harassment cases in particular no so i mean that means there are preventive clauses being executed by these guys to ensure that you cannot uh, process against them and can go forward with that now my point on this particular small perspective to you like you know since you said again there's actors body and so forth internal complaints committee is rather a uh, a mandate and i'm not saying that it's a mandate for anybody who's running the show or whatever but at least as individuals like so so we cannot say that law is falling short it is more of a choice that individuals in the industry are yes. choosing and that in the you problem know, in india is that people choose to ignore and walk off so that is what if women came more forward like tanushri datta case was once when someone speaks up then the other ones it's like mob mentality then they're like yes 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 even i was affected by it and suddenly people start talking about it but then it dies down again nobody really pursues it news channels or newspapers don't pursue it for a longer period of time there are no follow ups i don't think there's been a follow up on the tanushri datta case uh, of whether nana patakar something happened about it, it just died down so women also the thing about our industry is it's so work related that people will do anything for that work but that's money driven right so on legally what i'm trying to say here is when you sign these contracts and you find certain kind of objection rather as a body you do not take an action on it if that starts happening and that's why you know our whole idea of sexual um, harassment engagement with influential figures like you is basically to ensure that you know this goes out but is only going out enough because i don't think so that works i mean we've spoken about it everyone speaks about it right. even on my show when i talk legally about these things i say legal education is important the exercise you know or uh, exercising your right to stop all of this is one of the basic fundamental rights of every individual we really cannot blame anyone else than ourselves in case we do not take the action right what i want to know from your stand is that when as a 18 year old you know you come from a household where people are educated people know what's happening and that happens to i think all of us in the millennials so called millennials and new millennials which are coming in with the backgrounds where we've been taught and i'm sure you had a different perspective about life that you know i can do this in court i can do that in court i know my rights that would have been the thing when you became an adult coming to that and getting blunt exposure to this how does it die down that this uh, you know when i've had my friends who say that you know legally i could have done this mm-hmm. or legally it is my right when you say that how that will to exercise just only on basis of work formulates a personality into believing that it is okay to do so only by work mm-hmm. that means the instilled belief of uh, you know preventing something and having the uh, support of law is interconnected that means we are either not very confident of the law that's why our beliefs die down what is your take on that because you entered pretty early into the industry really really early so what how was your first experience of it and what did you have at that point of mind in your uh, you know mind I don't think the belief in law is questionable. I think if you have adequate representation, uh, if you take up the case and you file a complaint against someone and you plan to sue that person, you will get adequate rep- representation. But like I said, at ground level, the reality is people don't really take it that far. Women don't stretch it that far, and you know, go to the level that they're going to drag a producer or a director or an actor to court, because that eventually, a lot of women have done it. Let's not Tanushree Datta is the most recent case, but. women who have done it they've literally been ostracized from the industry so the the, the wave that instead of lauding that individual and saying that oh she had the courage and the guts to come forward and come and let's support her what happens is after that little bit of support that happens and the hue and cry around it the rest of the people start shunning her which is why that now other producers other direct that's the reality other producers other actors and all they'll be like oh i'm we are very scared this is a very outspoken women the problem in india is if you're outspoken too much and especially if you're a woman after a point you're told to shut up so people will stop working with you and eventually the others it sets a great example for the other women then they're like okay let me just go ahead and do whatever i i can do to make myself land this job and um, it doesn't matter because the other women didn't get uh, the women who voiced their opinions didn't get the jobs so let me be quiet and more on that in the sense that you know the sense of questioning 
I think is not there in and my question to you was apart from what you said absolutely is more on that that you know as a 18 year old you question everything in life you know it's a basic sense to question but once you enter such a professional setup you know is it that so at, many factors that yes, influence your Yes exactly so at 18 when you enter is it that most of the people at that time even educated people are not aware of laws that is why they stop questioning or is it the lack of awareness which generally our system is you know until i joined the law school i had only read about it i did not really know what's happening around me even after joining the law school i realized execution of law is much different than reading what you see in law but the basic legal education is not part of our subject anywhere any case it's not there around the world but more than so in india at least neither do we have these talks at home neither do we see it in our circle do you think that is also one of the major reason at least being in the industry because see, it's a creative field everyone's a creative coming and working here so i do not blame someone for some creativity it's just that uh, you know the awareness like in hollywood it happened you know i mean i say us is foremost there they must be having very strong laws on this but the me too when it kicked in you see how they accepted that rather than you know refurbishing it and throwing it away and saying no it's only these set of women and there are names that came out and they are very big names right so is it our ideology of questioning that we are even as you know let's say a women lobby we've hyped by saying that no no women special treatment keep them separate and all of that that also creates creates one of the issues if women get together and file a pil let's say of the industry that kind of initiative because that's part of the right of the, you know as legal citizens of the country and i had anjali also previously on the show in mm-hmm. one of my episodes and she was saying that you know how she was secluded so is it a thing that you feel you know is it just because of lack of education on the on the legal side of us all of us as indian citizens you feel is there a gap yes definitely i don't think in uh, when in school or in college uh, legal aspect was unless and until you're a law student and you study it academically otherwise is apart from that uh, you you are not very aware of your legal rights uh, which is why people don't really uh, they don't rally together or they don't get together they don't individually have the guts to go ahead and say hey this is my right and uh, i can question this in court in fact when the tanushree datta case happened people were talking me too and i also came forward yeah. there were so many girls um from all over the world unknown strangers who wrote to me uh, on instagram on other social media platforms and said that hey i have also gone through the same thing and then they started narrating their incident and when i asked them that did you do anything about it there so the first thing is the only, the first recourse if something like this happens is you'll think about going to the cops yeah you'll walk into a police station yeah. and that's where their ambition of taking this up legally dies down because they know the moment we walk into a a, a thana uh, people are going to over question them they're going to be um, harassed even further and uh, it's going to it in fact it's it they'll counter question them so much that it will start that they will feel that there's something wrong with them so those women never really took up these also they were of course not very fully educated because if someone was que- counter questioning them at a police station they would be like hey it's my right and i am here to file a complaint you have no absolutely. right to counter question me absolutely but yes i agree with you that there is a lack of education at a very basic school education college you know, and, education level and on that point only as i was mentioning like you know if you if if the people knew that they can file a zero fir without going to a police station if they feel so they could have easily done so but i understand this is a major problem with under trials and pre trials as well where cops try to you know fabricate change stuff and it becomes a he- not only for women it's for men cops behave like that and in most situations it happens because you know and secondly you're an influential figure again so when you enter a police station it creates a whole uh, kind of different dilemma there and then they want to make money off you and so forth so on but on this point again uh, you know let's uh, because i've discussed certain experiences of mine uh, and i have put them on the show previously in my episodes anything like that you would like to share because you've had a long journey anything which you saw uh, happening you know and i'm not saying it has to be an adverse act of physicality which you saw mm-hmm. but uh, any such situation where you felt you know wow this is happening and then this should have not happened where with you, me no not with you maybe maybe with your counterparts or with you or anything of such sort where you were like you know i want to whack the guy out <laughs> and you know i'm working here and what the hell is wrong with you there is no a uh, guy there are so many men that i want to <laughs> whack in this industry <laughs> because as part of the me too campaign there were yeah. so many names that were written about yeah. men uh those names were in the newspapers i don't want to individually of name course. those men uh, yeah. right now <laughs> but 
uh, so me been, and my friends we got together and we're like yes we know this man yes we know this man we know exactly what he's done and the problem with these kind of uh, you know um, serial uh, <laughs> sexual harassers is the fact that their pattern is the same so um, there are a few Ted Bundy tapes. Uh, yeah, 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 a very typical like Ted Bundy, the serial killer. If you if you're into sexual harassment, you have a typical way of going about sexually harassing women. And me and my friends, we had these stories to tell about the few particular men who were mentioned in the newspaper, and we had this discussion amongst ourselves that. Um, Oh my god finally women have spoken up against these men and they were trying to you know yeah, uh, sure. pass lewd remarks or you know th- th- the thing is uh, touching you inappropriately at a party also because In our industry one. our industry we have to go out a lot we have to socialize a lot and we we dress a certain way the the vibe of a social circle uh, when we go out partying it's very informal so the way some men approach you and they touch you it's very inappropriate it happens it happens it in fact had happened recently to one of my friends also she said that this man called me for a meeting and then he called me up to his room in the hotel and said that hey i want to check you out properly and then f- probably see if you're capable to take up a role in a, in a role in a movie or not so it's happening rampantly and i, I don't think it's stopped <laughs> i think no in terms of dressing you know it's it's such a thing like you know you can wear whatever you want but it's again the psyche right so i i feel it's more of a psychological problem with most of the men that you know that you get into seeing this and you know wow of course i mean everyone has their opinions and views but like as you said in parties it's a public place these things happen but uh, nothing specific you would like to encounter like i would like to highlight one point very uh, vehemently you know during my stint in in a corporate what i saw the most amazing part was that at a party some individual uh, uh, and i was i had just joined in with my all my principles and my law school knowledge intact and i joined in and uh, and uh, i i went about it there was a party happening and this very senior individual to a fairly attractive girl as per his definition not ours told us that you know she's coming to the party and i'm like what are you talking mm-hmm. you know this is not what you talk she's like no no i will meet her and then he got drunk and then there were different situations that happened and i ended up getting into a brawl with that individual for whatever reasons it was but that shows the point i think everywhere that you know this kind of a setup and it was very embarrassing you know for me to see all of that and then stand up because nobody stands up i think that's also another issue i'm sure uh, you know in the industry which is like iska kaam hai jaane do do not get into the tangles on that take hasleen final any words from your side you know where you feel it's headed and what would you like to do or provide some knowledge to the juniors who would be joining in and to our listeners that you know know the law better or stand for the law better or like voice your opinion out what would you choose out of the three of course educate yourself fully for all your legal rights and start voicing out more i think individually me coming on the show also today or uh, you had abha singh who's a crusader for women rights um as many women as many women as possible who can start verbalizing their pain and their trauma in as explicit ways as possible and not just brush it under the carpet i think that is something that we need uh, more often and uh, that is something that i would like to request every woman out there because it happens to every woman at at a very young age it starts it's very sad in our country at a very young age it starts and then it goes on uh, it also mars your career it dampens Esteem. your spirits yeah, yeah it dampens your spirits it's at every step in fact even when you walk into a meeting with a strange man you don't know how that meeting's going to turn out if he's going to look at you from a sexual point of view is he only going to look at you for your talent or your, and your professional success or whatever a woman has to be wary of these these things always a man doesn't have to worry about that so it will be good if women start talking about it more because recently women have started talking about it men have also become a lot more particular about how they treat women and how they talk to them so i believe more more um, more awareness is the more awareness uh, talk about it a lot more talk about your problems talk to other people reach out help other people as much as you can as i did to all my friends and other people who had written to me and just try and help them out and tell them that i'm there for you if something like this were, was to ever happen and if i could help you out with any legal uh, assistance or with support that i can just go out and help other women so that they know that someone's watching out watching their back and no one's going to do any mudslinging or question your character and uh, with this i would like to end this uh, episode and on a lighter note towards the end do you feel emancipated with me now <laughs> yes amba thank you for having me on this thanks show thanks for having on this show and thanks for your opinion <laughs> thank you for listening to know your kanoon for more queries and questions please contact me at contact@corpuslegal.in catch know your kanoon every week on the ivm website 
or the app or anywhere you get your podcast from look up in the internet it's a meme no it's a cat video no it's the geek fruit podcast That's right. We interrupt this riveting broadcast to tell you about our show, The Geek Fruit Podcast, where Tejas Dinkar and I, Jishnu, talk about everything in pop culture, including DC, Marvel, Star Wars, Netflix, and everything in between. You know how your friends hate it when you ramble about some nerdy crap and you just want somebody to listen to you. Well, sorry, there's nothing we can do about that. But come listen to us ramble, and it'll almost be like the real thing, kind of. Listen to new episodes of the Geek Fruit podcast every Monday and the Geek Fruit Bulletin every Thursday on iTunes, Google Podcasts, the IVM app, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Happy listening, you nerds! Do you have a night routine? Well, everyone has one, and the to-do list usually looks like this: brush your teeth, set that alarm, get into your pajamas, and switch off those screens. But here's one more to add to that list. Tune into the Positively Unlimited podcast for a dose of positive action and tips on how to build powerful mindsets. Episodes out every Monday on the IVM Podcast app, ivmpodcast.com or wherever you tune into podcasts.